Hi, my name is Susan and I've been playing Read Only Memories. Read Only Memories is a cyberpunk point and click visual novel adventure. The game has a really nice retro futuristic art style and a really catchy soundtrack which feeds into the kind of story that it wants to tell. The game is set in 2064 in Neo San Francisco and it's a world where people can buy augmentations. So for example they can like make themselves look more animal like rather than human. It's a world where everyone has ROMs, relationship and organisational managers, which are basically these robots who can do different things from managing your calendar to cleaning or changing the weather around you. There are different ways of connecting to the mesh, which is like a super duper internet, and there are factions that have mixed feelings about the way in which technology is moving the human race, so like one faction is calling for everyone to reject these technological advances but then there are the companies that are pushing to go further, but it's not always clear why, like whether that's for the betterment of humanity or for their own financial gain. It's against this kind of backdrop that the story starts. You play the part of a down-and-out journalist, and one day a self-aware wrong, appropriately called Turing, drops in on you, and he asks you to help find their creator, who happens to be a friend of yours. Um, Turing's creator has gone missing under suspicious circumstances and it's very much like the trope of a hard-nosed journalist investigating a mysterious conspiracy. I love that kind of thing, like I really like good mystery stories so that made the game really fun and interesting to play for me. In typical point-and-click style, you have to interact with objects and talk to people and every now and then there are these other different puzzles that you need to solve in order to progress. Um, I spent quite a lot of time in the game just like messing around with the different options of interactions, like I ended up carrying a carton of spoiled milk around with me for no real reason and it was pretty funny to just see like individual bits of text that would pop up when I tried to use it on different people and different objects. Like It's quite an undertaking to have individual dialogue for every single interaction, but this game basically does and it feels all the more richer for for it. The point and click adventure and the puzzle elements almost feel secondary to the story and the characters themselves. There are loads of different characters and they all have their own stories and personalities that you can uncover as you go through the game and take the time to talk to and interact with them. There's the detective who reluctantly helps you with your investigation, there's the charismatic hacker who also helps you out, and even the bartenders who look after the club that you end up going to quite a lot. Like, they even they have something to them. There's a really colourful cast of characters, and the most interesting of all is um, Turing himself. He has a lot to say, and he's figuring himself out and what it means to be a self-aware android, but he's really the whole point of the story, and seeing him develop as the game went along was something that I really enjoyed as well. I finished the game in around five to six hours, and that was with a lot of messing around and extra reading. But once I finished it, I still felt like I could go back and do it again because there were some character interactions I missed out on. I really enjoyed the story and there were a few surprises and twists along the way that kept things interesting and kept me on my toes. I'd say get this game if you like good mysteries, conspiracy stories, cyberpunk adventures and clever robots. Thanks for listening and you can check out more at readyup.net.